Welcome, welcome. Well, it's um, top of the hour. Let's let's get started. We are uh, so happy you're with us today. Um, I'm Linda Postbushkovsky. I'm the executive director. And uh, let me um, pin myself and I'm going to pin Valora Starr, who is our director for um, programs. And she is going to be presenting with me today. And we're very excited that you're all here. Happy that you could spend, um, take a little time out of your Saturday to be with us and to um, have a conversation around what it is that board members need to be about um, in order to accomplish their work. Um, let me just share my screen here for a moment. Um, okay, why is it not all, there we go. Too many things open here. And uh, we'll just go to this. And, all right. So um, as you can see, this is our members, our leadership training for synodical board members. And um, anyone else who wanted to join in today, we're very happy to have you here for this conversation. Um, it's a one hour and uh, we'll do a little orienting as we are right now. Uh, Valora is gonna lead us in a Bible study help us understand um, our call to leadership. And then we'll talk about um, some uh, kind of, not quite nuts and bolts training, but training based on what the constitution says. And then we'll have probably about 20 minutes left at the end to do uh, Q and A. Our goal is to really um, help you feel equipped to accomplish the work that you are called to do. Um, we are um, hopeful, I, I, many people um, you know, feel pretty comfortable in the Zoom environment these days, but just a couple of notes on Zoom etiquette. Um, this hour will go quickly. Um, please remain muted, remain muted. Um, if um, one of us needs to call on you or we have questions, uh, we will we'll unmute you. You can always post things into the chat. It's fun to have a vigorous chat going on while we're doing this. Um, if you are familiar with the um, emojis or the um, reactions, you probably have something in your um, ribbon at the bottom of your screen that allows you to make reactions. It might be under more. Um, you can take a look there too. But um, you can raise your hand there and then that is a way that we'll know that you're in in the queue to ask a question or offer a comment um, putting all your questions into the chat is really helpful because then if we're not able to get to all of them we can get back to them and share answers with everyone at a later point so are there any questions just about kind of the mechanics here of uh, what we're going to do Everybody feels comfortable in our Zoom environment, do we? All right. Well, let us uh, join in prayer. Gracious God, as you have called workers to varied tasks in the world and in your church, so too have you called these women, your servant leaders, as board members in this ministry of women of the ELCA. Grant them joy and a spirit of bold trust that their work may stir up each of us to a life of fruitful service through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now Valora Starr is um, going to lead us in a Bible study. So. Hey, welcome, sisters. Welcome. Um, there are very few uh, counts in scripture where God or Jesus or the Holy Spirit uh, leads a person to an assignment. Uh, the person says yes to the assignment and then um, God, Jesus, or the Holy Spirit tells the person or the people how to do it. Now, God uh, will not do what we can do ourselves. Uh, that's, that's counterproductive. So the Holy Spirit has given us spiritual gifts and then the, um, the skills and our, our tool uh, kit that we have and we carry around with us all the time. Uh, those are the things that, that are available to us 
um, to do the work um, that we have been called to do. And in Women of the ELCA, there are how-to uh, resources available online everywhere, not just for Women of the ELCA, but everywhere. If you go online and you can find um, how to complete a task and what skills you can develop to do those tasks. So uh, trainings uh, in, in a how-to uh, to be a skilled um, uh, SWO president, I mean, uh, board member, uh, only makes um, uh, a small group of people trained at one time. And however, uh, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are always there to provide the why we are to carry out the command or the instructions given. And for the last uh, two decades or so, uh, we have been concentrating on the how uh, instead of the why. And that has uh, become blurred for, uh, for many of us over these uh, last 20 years. If we don't tell ourselves the story over and over again, then it gets blurred and everyone has a different interpretation as to why it is that we do the things that we do. But uh, in, that, in that blurriness, it causes uh, our leaderful community that's called for in our purpose statement uh, to be choked off uh, from the why the community of women needs to exist and needs to flourish. So listen to these words of the, of the purpose statement, or if you could um, mute yourselves and then we could all say it out loud together. How about that? Don't unmute just stay muted and then say it out loud to yourself, okay? As a community of women created in the image of God, called to discipleship in Jesus Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit, we commit ourselves to grow in faith, affirm our gifts, support one another in our callings, engage in ministry and action, and promote healing and wholeness in the church the society, and the world. Now, you've heard those words and they're very, very familiar. We can almost do it by heart. And so now I want us to look at um, Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. And so that we can see um, more, why we need more leaders uh, in this uh or why they needed more leaders to be developed in this uh, new church that was growing rapidly. In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebrew Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the 12 gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us, that's the 12, to neglect the ministry of the word, God, the word of God in order to wait on tables. So brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and we'll give our attention to prayer and the word, the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. Then choose, they, cho they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Pocorus, Nicanor, Timon, Herennius, and Nicholas from Antioch, a converted, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and, an, and a number, a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Now, as we look at, um, at these um, 
uh, at this uh, text, the quick answer to the reason why more leaders were needed is because not everyone was being fed. Now that's the simple answer. And although this account is about uh, tangible food, it also speaks to what people uh, spiritually need. Um, and so we need to ask ourselves the question, are women, is this, is this um, leaderful community created in the image of God, is it being fed? Um, and do they belong to this, to this uh, community? Uh, and do they have purpose? So as we think about that, um, we know what was challenging the, the, the early church or this early community, that the widows, the women, were not being fed um, uh, tangibly. They weren't getting a meal every day. So the question today uh, during this pandemic that we're still in and attempting to to start our, our, our activities up again. What is it that is challenging this community today, today? And what are women hungry for? And where is the disconnect? So if you would uh, raise your hand or if you just wanna raise it this way, uh, we can catch it and, and you can unmute and we'll call on you uh, so we can have a little discussion. So what's challenging women as they're, they're trying to come out of, uh, of um, pandemic life, uh, that, that isolation, to come back into um, their spaces at church or wherever their uh, units are meeting, or even your uh, synodical organization as you're trying to get back into um, meeting in person or uh, coming together to uh, start to plan. Uh, what is your challenge? No challenges? Mm -hmm. What do we have here in the chat? Yeah, uh, who's that? Northern Texas, if you want to unmute. I think our biggest challenge right now, people have become so complacent in staying home and it's just taking a little bit longer to get everybody energized and enthusiastic about things. Um, we just had our conference spring gathering mm -hmm. and um, I'm the conference that I'm in, in my synod, and I was the only one that showed up for the planning. So I was getting a little concerned but I was shocked when I went to it, there were 70 ladies that turned out for it. Oh. So um, I, I was very pleased, but I think if we get the word out and if one person encourages another person and that one says, I'll pick you up, come on, let's go. It just takes a little bit of push and encouragement from one person to get it going. And um, I think, I think everybody's starting to feel that now you just uh, and you know a lot of us are older women and it's hard for them to venture out they feel that oh is it safe is it okay and you know just the churches are starting just to open up now I mean it's 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 taken a while so I think we have to be hopeful we have to just you know persevere and just encourage each other is the only thing that we can do. Yeah. So when we look back at our purpose statement, it's supporting one another in our callings and how do we affirm each other? So, so your way of affirming is to be encouraging. That's awesome. Awesome. Anyone else? Any more challenges out there? There's a few, Valora, that have been listed in the chat. Um, people being hesitant to come together, um, a shortage of willing and qualified workers, um, noting that people are out of the habit of participating. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, 
Okay. Got it. Okay, so let's, um, um, Liz, we'll, we'll come back around to willing and qualified workers. We'll come back to that one. Okay, so the number of disciples was increasing. And the 12, that was the, um, the original 12, the apostles understood why they were called. And that's in verse two. And they knew that adding more ministry tasks to their own plate would not get the job done. So in order to, um, to continue to be um, uh, focused on spreading God's word. So you got to remember, go back to Acts uh, 1, 8, where, where, um, where Jesus says, you know, that, that you will be my witnesses and you will go to uh, uh, Judea, to Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth, uh, sharing the good news and bringing others to Christ. So in order to do that, they knew that they could not spend all of their time um, with with this growing group of people and just feeding the people, physically feeding the people, making the meals and cleaning the tables and picking up the trash and whatever else there was to do. They knew they couldn't do both the jobs. So more leaders were needed. And the, the 12 also knew that this, this work that they were doing in this particular place on this particular day was not a permanent task or not a permanent situation. They didn't leave the community. You know, as many of our, our leaders do, we, um, we, we serve and then we disappear until someone asks us to be elected again, right? But, but that's not the, that's not the, the way in which we, um, God operates in calling us to a task. Okay, so the 12 were clear about who, who they were looking for. So it says that in, in, um, uh, in choosing the, the, the people, the, the tasks they were given were to find seven among them who were uh, full of spirit and wisdom. But often when we are in a meeting, Think about when you're in a meeting and, you know, you're getting ready for the convention and you start to look for people. Um, sometimes the conversation just boils down to a body. Do we have a name to put in this slide? Yeah. So we don't, we're, we're not uh, using our spiritual edge to look for or, or, or the, our, our spiritual mandate of who we're looking for, but we look for a body rather than the gifts that the women possess. And then sometimes when, um, when leaders are, are tired and fatigued themselves, they begin to, um, to come to that point of nobody's willing to serve. Does that make sense? Have we heard that before or have we felt that before? So then it said uh, in, the, in the passage, it says, once you find these persons, these seven people, we will turn uh, this responsibility over to them. So, did you notice that in that statement, there is no mention of training or mentoring. Uh, there is no, no mention of a learning period or the present leaders showing them how we do it. But the persons who rise up and who bubble up will figure all of that out. Okay. Now, there is a season in every organization uh, where, the, where it's great increase, and then there are times when things appear to be dead. But when we 
as leaders are faithful and prepare for that next season, there will always be a harvest, always. And there is nothing in our purpose statement that sees any disciple in the community of women as being too old, too young, not enough experience, or not Lutheran enough to respond, here I am, Lord, send me. Okay. Well, thank you, Valora. Um, very helpful to hear that message of how um, the early church expanded leadership and the process that they engaged in. Uh, some definitely some learnings for us within our organization. Well, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, some of the mechanics of the work that is entrusted to synodical organizations. Um, you know, people will often contact our office and ask for a job description. Well, we don't have a job description for um, any of our offices actually. Um, but our constitution really does speak to what is required of the um, various folks who serve in leadership, whether it's an officer or a regular board member. Um, a lot of times it seems folks kind of get caught up in the um, creating a job description and adding more things to the job description. And, um, you know, it, it narrows often the people, the pool of leadership who can certainly work with us. Um, but we know there's no shortage of ministry to, to be done, right? Uh, there's plenty of work for us all to do. We could all be doing even more than we currently are. And if we are willing to um, expand who's at the table and who's in a leadership role and to give them the work to do and let them run with it, as they did in the passage from Acts then we can see um, a real increase and a greater um, possibility of achieving both our mission and our per, um, purpose. I want to take a look at our constitution and um, hopefully you all have a copy of that at, you know, not necessarily at this moment, but um, have access to it and re rely on it regularly. Um, in the model constitution for our synodical organizations, this is, this is your marching orders. The purpose of this SWO shall be to assist units within its territory to fulfill the purpose of women of the ELCA. So you are a bridge, the SWO is a bridge between the whole churchwide organization, which is all of us, and women in the individual congregational units or special units you might have um, within your synodical territory. That's your job. And um, anything beyond that is, is pretty much superfluous. And you will um, want to you know, be looking at whether or not what you're doing fits within this purpose or not. Um, and of course, you know what our purpose is. You see it there. Uh, we've recited it just a few moments ago. Um, let's take a little bit of a look at what the Constitution spells out as your specific um, responsibilities as a board. Um, this is what you are called to do. You transact any business that, and make programmatic decisions between your conventions. You set policies. Uh, that might be uh, a policy about um, uh, what, what kind of reimbursement occurs for different expenses, or it could be a policy about your anti-racism work, or you name it. Um, there's no limitation on the, the definition of policies there. Um, you supervise and coordinate the work of all committees that the board may appoint. Um, I bet some of you are out there saying, really, we could appoint committees? <laughs> you may never have done that. You may have thought that the board was required to do all of that work, but no, you have the authority to um, invite others in to share in that leadership of the, of the synodical organization. Um, you also have to identify board members who will work between um, the churchwide organization and your units, both programmatically and then around organizational issues too. You determine the time and place of the convention 
And um, I know that a lot of SWO boards kind of get caught up in, in, in the work of a convention. And of course it goes on here with um, further items that relate to a convention, preparing the agenda, the rules of procedure, whatever your program is gonna be, reporting out, um, recommending a budget. Um, this is not your singular job, although um, I've seen from time to time some SWOs whose boards kind of function as if this is the only thing you're about. But no, I mean, there's much more that you're called to do. Remember, you are called to assist the women in the units to live out the purpose. Um, if there are vacancies that occur, you have to fill them. And also if there is um, an incapacity of a board leader or board member uh, to perform her duties, then um, it is the responsibility of the synodical board to take that on and figure out what to do. And that does happen from time to time. I know um, I served on the synodical board in uh, Northeastern Pennsylvania in the early 90s. And um, when I was on that board, we had to make that decision and uh, to remove a president. Um, she was not able to continue serving. And it was a very um, prayerful and thoughtful process that we engaged in, but it, it does happen. Um, you also act as a constitution and bylaws committee, and that would um, be applicable if you want to bring any proposed changes to your constitution or bylaws, and they go to our churchwide board. And then your convention might um, delegate some work to you. It may be um, something around, um, well, let's say, setting up a period of uh, prayer, um, maybe a month worth of prayer around a particular topic, and you are to facilitate that. Um, it could be that your SWO, in, um, the convention itself, asks you to do some other leadership work around a specific topic. Maybe it's anti-racism, may, maybe it's um, anti-human trafficking, something along those lines. So that is also your work. Um, there's no shortage of work for you to engage in, is there? <laughs> so let's just take a look um, here at um, what you are asked to do. You're asked to transact, you're to be a decision maker, you're supervising, coordinating, identifying, networking, determining, preparing, reporting, filling, and acting. Um, is that what you're doing? Are there any of these things um, and this is not a rhetorical question. I'd like to get some feedback from you and you can put it in the chat or you can raise your hand. Um, are there any of these things that you're not currently doing? Um, you as a, you know, we'll say the, your synodical board um, or are you doing some of these things, uh, things beyond this that really are not your task that should be the task of someone else? So let me stop the screen share and uh, see what are are any of you not doing the things that you're called to do let's start there this is a safe place you can be honest and say you know we're not quite there yet is anyone raising their hand i'm, I'm not seeing um any hands yet Um, if someone uh, wants to just unmute themselves and share a sentence or two. Okay, uh, let's answer the other question and take a look at that. Are you doing other things beyond these things? Um, it was pretty clear with some of our earlier trainings that um, some of the other officers were definitely doing things that they didn't need to be doing, that they could be um, shared with someone else like let's say a synodical president who is also newsletter editor. That's not the job of a synodical president. Lori, go right ahead. Um, just coming off of being president, we, we struggle with this in Southwest Texas where we at times we were focusing too much on meetings, like you mentioned, and it was kind of like we had meetings to plan meetings. <laughs> and so um a, a retreat gave us the opportunity to kind of reevaluate and um and actually we were doing the other thing too where our officers were doing most of the things 
And so a lot of our synodical board members didn't feel ownership. And so we kind of divided up the work more and spread it out. And so we all were more engaged. And so that's a work in progress down here. That has that we've been looking at. Thank you. And and I think that's um, the observation that it's a work in progress. We're always a work in progress when it comes to this because the, the board is shifting at every convention and you have new people being elected and new leadership and people are in different times of their lives. And um, yeah, it's, um, uh, and, and there's no one perfect way to do any of this. That's the other thing. We're all doing it in a way that works in our context and that's fine, um, but there are some minimums that we have to do. So let's turn to Pam Nye. Go right ahead, Pam. Unmute yourself. Yeah, I, I think by not in, uh, involving other people, we're, we're not only hurting ourselves as a board, but we're not allowing other people to get their feet wet and kind of semi-train them and, you know, help get the other people involved so that they may want to take on a leadership role maybe later on as they get more comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. Um, I bet in a lot of your SWOs, you follow a, a pattern where the um, vice president is responsible for planning your convention. Um, th th that's not spelled out anywhere <laughs> in the Constitution. And um, how good it might be to do a, use a different model. I know in some um, SWOs, the responsibility to plan and carry out the convention moves from conference and cluster to conference and cluster all around the SWO. So that's a real way to, to share leadership. And you could still have one person on your board be the liaison to those planning teams. Um, Donna, you had your hand up? Okay, so my situation is very similar to Pam's. We're planning a retreat and um, actually, the vice president did actually volunteer to do that planning. We didn't draft her into that. And she um, and the committee um, are quite concerned about they want to break things out into committees for this retreat and the planning of it and wanted the board members to step forward. And I said, um, I, I think, really think you need to look outside of the board and get more people involved again. So some of them could bubble up into leadership and find out really what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thanks for sharing. That's great. Um, Valora, you look like you're about ready to make a point. You're gonna have to unmute. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think if we think about the, our purpose statement, um, what this sounds like when we say that women um, need time to, to, um, to become acclimated to women of the ELCA, they are already a part of the organization, a part of the community of women. So if we set up this, um, this conversation in our head or this culture that somehow there's a magic a group of leaders and everybody else has to has to kind of uh, come to themselves to be one of one of those uh, uh, be in one of those positions, then we are writing a whole different uh, purpose statement. We're describing the community of women in a different kind of way. And so I want you all to real I really want to encourage you and I want to support you as you, move into uh, uh, developing a new language for yourself, that that is not, um, it's not what's called for. There are many women who are in your synodical organizations who could plan a convention in their sleep. But because we have a picture of how it should be done, we assume that those people don't exist. So we have to give them room to exist, and then they'll come. I mean, it, it's it's not uh, rock. It's not like it doesn't happen. It 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 will happen if we have faith and we trust that it will. Right, and um, we also know that when you look at our purpose statement, there are um, 
very few qualifiers there. It doesn't say you have to be a certain age in order to engage in our in our ministry um, or that you have to have a certain level of experience or that you have to be in a certain chosen professional field or anything like that. Um, it is our shared work as women of the church. Um, I want to bring us back to our the purpose of the SWO and just ask this question. How well is your SWO doing with its main task? And of course, that main task is assisting units within your territory to fulfill the purpose. So let, let's, um, let me stop the share. And um, anyone have an answer to that? How well are you doing your main task? Maybe I should start by saying, is, is that understood to be your main task? <laughs> that is what the Constitution calls you to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, Karen, yes, Karen Moyer. As a former president and now a board member again on Southwest California, I have found that the board right now did a, is doing a much better job than what my board did in assisting mm -hmm. units within the territory. Yeah. And, um, and I've only been at two meetings, you know, I, I'm new um, to this board, but I feel like they seem to be, we have our um, Latino organizations involved, very involved. So um, I think that's one of the things we needed to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, there is no one right way to be supportive of the units. And you may have different models that you follow. I know several synodical organizations assign uh, board members to different conferences or clusters, whatever your term is. And then that particular person is the primary liaison to all of, you know, maybe it's 20 or 30 congregations in one geographic region. Um, that's certainly one uh, approach. Um, and many of ours, I know um, we, I've had conversation with the president in central states and um, they've been making personal contact with every unit, whether it's by phone or Zoom, um, trying to get, um, you know, asking folks where they are right now because we know people are coming out of the um, um, self-imposed or governmentally imposed uh, quarantining time. And now they're trying to come back and um, how are they gonna come back and what's that gonna look like? And so that's one SWO who chose to make those calls. Now, some of you have relatively small SWOs because you're in a small synod, um, either geographically or numerically. And making those kinds of contacts isn't, isn't all that hard if you share that task. And I know pre-pandemic, some of our presidents um, would try to get out and visit with every unit. Uh, now that might be a, a kind of an overwhelming task given where you are, but it is a way that maybe you could split that up too to actually go and visit with folks and see what they're doing. Um, yeah. Um, I, I appreciate some of the, the notes here. Lori's comment about how um, the pandemic has kind of shown how the board can be an important partner and how even that the, the S, you know, how many of your SWOs stepped up and did something different during the pandemic, like um, hosted a book discussion or hosted Bible studies. Uh, that's been happening in Southwest California, I believe too. Yeah. And where a particular unit could not maybe imagine doing that themselves, they could join with all of the other units and do something of that order. That's a, a really great example of um, coming out of the pandemic and the hosting of retreats and things that happened on Zoom too. I mean, they're not the same as in person, but they were certainly very valuable to our faith journeys during this difficult time. Um, Linda, you have Sherry. Yeah. Oh yeah, go ahead, Sherry, thanks. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, I, 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 we just had our last board meeting and um, what we do for 
our convention is um, we have five um, conferences in our M Northeast Minnesota Synod and we delegate the um, duties for the convention um, to each of these um, uh, conferences. So mm -hmm. the conference chair of, of the, we contact them and tell them what duty they have. They have to make the quilt or um, they have to be in charge of the prayer room or um, so, so it's not all on the synod. It's uh, the board members. We, we try to um, give it out to the conferences and then that conference chair contacts the local units and then they get involved. So I, I think that takes a lot of the burden off of the board, which I am on the nominating committee and I haven't had too much trouble finding people that want to um, serve because it's not uh, overwhelming. It's not a, a chore that is going to just like make you not want to work. You know, you want to, you want to do it because um, it's uh, not all on your shoulders. It's, we, we delegate it out. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. Um, of course, your, your role, we've just discussed quite a bit about your relationship with the units. You also bear a relationship with the churchwide organization. And one of the most important pieces there is in keeping data current for um, the churchwide organization. We can only use the data that you provide, right? So we have to always have your most recent listing of your um, board members immediately following a convention, keeping that up to date. Um, you do that working with our director for membership, Eva Yo, um, and um, responding in a quick fashion whenever any kind of data request or report is needed from you. That's invaluable to keep the churchwide organization functioning well and supporting everyone as well. I think at this point, we're ready to, to kind of go to more generalized questions and we'll take them um, from you. We have about 15 minutes um, left um, that we can spend in conversation. So um, why don't you go ahead and um, start posting them in the chat and or raising your hand and then we'll call on you. Um, I do want to um, offer a couple of just personal tips that helped me a lot when I was on a synodical board. Um, of course, this was before um, we used um, our phones or a, a, a notebook or a laptop quite like we do these days, but I had a physical notebook and I kept everything there whatever came to me um, from the churchwide organization was there and whatever came from my board members and, and had it organized. And of course, we encourage you to do that with our synodical leaders guide too, that every one of you should have a copy of that and a copy of the constitution. And um, that's a place for you to keep the financial reports that your treasurer is providing you. Just having all that data in one place, and you can do it today, either hard copy or you can have it all in one place, you know, on your hard drive. Um, but being equipped, that, that's part of your job, being equipped um, and being ready with that kind of information at your fingertips. Um, that and showing up, <laughs> um, you know, those, those are important, important tasks and being willing to think outside the box, always being open and creative. Um, I think those are good qualities for any of you serving as board members. Um, so do we have some questions you've been desiring to ask about your role or the work of the synodical organization or maybe of a particular officer or something of that sort? Now's your chance to ask them. Or maybe you have a great tip that you'd like to share that pertains to um, something you found invaluable in your work. What is the role of the CCC? Well, I think your first question is going to, or my first question is, um, what is the CCC? <laughs> what does that, what's that abbreviation stand for? Sheila, can you? Um, just either type it in or uh, convention conveners. You mean the person who is um, overseeing the 
the planning for the convention for your synodical convention? Is that what we're looking at? Oh, something for the, um, well, I'm guessing that you might have um, something unique in your SWO that's set up that way. Uh, that's not something that um, I know of <laughs> from the churchwide expression. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Check with your president or someone else on the board and so that you can learn um, what those people, you know, what their jobs are. Yeah, thank you. Um, other questions? I know too that you're trying to navigate right now whether or not you're going to be holding an in-person convention or doing an online convention this year um, or um, trying to figure out if you'll do a hybrid offering. Um, those are some really challenging questions. Um, Rayanne, you have a, your hand up. I just wanted to say we have a, um, a feedback sheet at the end of our convention. We, we do a, um, we call it fall gathering for marketing purposes. We had a retreat and a convention. Nobody wanted to come to the convention, you know, off years. Nobody wanted to come to the convention. So we split up and we do the convention annually, but we also do the retreat. Um, at the same time, we have like 40 workshops that happen during our, our weekend. Um, but what I found is when you find somebody that has a little bit of an excitement, if you draw them in and use their gifts and encourage their gifts, they'll bring other people with them usually to come back and then you can grow your involvement. We, we have a question on our feedback um, form um, asking, you know, are you interested in being part of, of uh, the convention or, or do you have any ideas? Are you willing to do a workshop? And uh, so we always like to follow up with those people and uh, make sure, but also just inviting personal invitation is, uh, is a really good way to get help. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. And that's such a simple thing to do too by um, having an evaluation form and inviting people um, you know, to complete that. Yeah. Yeah, and, um, as, and as board members, um, you should always have a baseline as to how many people will show up at any, any event. And that baseline would come from you. So if, you're, if you have a board of 12 and each one brings two, you would have how many people as coming to your event that you would start with, that you can be sure that they would be there. It would be 36 people. Mm -hmm. So, so if, if that is not happening and you're just waiting for some, some person who is, who looks excited, who will bring some more people, but you're not bringing any, if you're traveling or, or you go to an event but there's no one uh, going with you from your from your unit, or from your congregation, or just your your spiritual gal pals. Then there is something wrong with the leadership, and and so where we want to be. So part of encouraging is to actually look at what it is that we need to change from the inside. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. so, so it's not a negative thing, but when you fix it or when you shift your, your, your thinking, then that helps to then uh, move you to a place of growth. So you can start to, to see um, uh, the growth up here, if that makes sense. Uh, let me share. Um, my screen again, and uh, we just want to make sure that everybody knows where they can go on our website. I mean, our website is so full of so many things that can assist you as you live out your purpose of assisting units. Um, and, and just remember, you know, there's only six full-time staff now. We are the ones who are 
generating all of these various resources, but we can't take them into every unit. But you certainly can that, you know, that's your job as that liaison and as you help the units um, carry out our purpose. But if you are on our website, which is uh, womenoftheelca.org or welka.org, you can get to it either way. You want to go, we have um, navigation that goes across the top here. We have navigation here. And then once we get to an inner page, there's even more places to go. But Tools for Leaders is a place you should be quite familiar with. It's where you will link off for um, convention information when we have the triennial coming about. Um, Right here on the far right, we do have a listing of all of the memorials and resolutions that were adopted last August in the Triennial Convention. And um, you should be looking at those to figure out what you were called to do because every expression in the organization receives some marching orders through those memorials and resolutions and you, you should be uh, responding to those. We have all of our constitutions here and you would just click on here and that'll take you to another page where you can get the specifics. Um, we are posting our training videos um, and so you can come here and watch for all the other um, training sessions we've had. There's the second one for synodical secretaries. And here we have information for SWO treasures, unit treasures, how to get an offering envelopes and that kind of thing. We have a synodical leaders guide. If you currently do not have it, please come here and just download it. It's a PDF. We have it also available in Spanish. And it spells out a lot of the nuts and bolts that you need to be aware of that you know, transcend all of our SWOs. You can then, of course, add into it specifics regarding your own SWO. Um, and we have a few other things, um, some information about our logo. And if you want to use the logo for any kind of promotional materials, follow this link here and uh, you'll learn how to do that. We have a fact sheet um, or a welcome flyer here that you can download and use also in Spanish. And we have a PowerPoint that kind of goes along with it if you might want to use that in some um, setting. And uh, we have mission and purpose statement cards um, that are printable on, you know, um, stationary, like from Avery or one of those companies that you can just print both again in English and Spanish. And here's where you can find the synodical leaders report. All of the presidents get that um, when they receive the announcement of who's coming as their churchwide representative to a convention, but you can also download it here and um, learn about how to update your unit information. We just talked about that as well. All right, let me stop the share here. We just have about five more minutes. Um, any other questions that you might have or comments to offer for the good of the crowd? Um, Liz Burgess. Where'd you go, Liz? <laughs> there, I okay. hit uh, stop video instead of unmuting. <laughs> I just wanted, you know, um, lots of folks are aware that um, the women, the um, Synodical Women's Organization and units um, in New England have struggled mightily, um, even before the pandemic started. And I think we're, we're I'm very excited. Um, I think we're going to turn the corner. Um, the, um, the board uh, decided to use some of that rainy day money that's been tucked away and offer um, a gift to every, every woman who wants to come to the fall convention. Right. And it um, ended up with um, that 50 women expressed interest. Mm -hmm. Well, that is more than came, you know, um, years ago. So um, we're, we're, they're working hard. And um, I think 
we're on our way to uh, putting new life into uh, New England women at the ELCA. Well, three cheers for New England. Great. Right. <laughs> Sherry, how about you, Sherry Johnson? Yes, I was wondering, you know, that um, this is for the board members, this leadership training. Um, and I was wondering, I think there is a treasure um, one coming up, but I'm not a treasurer of the Senate. I'm treasurer of the conference. I was wondering if I would be able to get into that one. Um, anyone's welcome to come to any of them. The treasurer was actually last week. Um, we oh. will be will be posting the video from it and just have, spend an hour in a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and enjoy that video. Okay. It should be up this All coming right. week. Yeah. Karen Moyer. I was just wondering how this this training was publicized. I happened upon it. it I don't think it was mentioned at our board meeting. And I just, I went out to the website and I saw it. And that's why I came. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it was announced at the February leadership training event that we would be doing these um, trainings following in the spring for each of the different categories of leaders. And then it was um, announced in Bold Connections, our e-newsletter for two or three months. And of course, Facebook, and it was promoted with all of our synodical presidents. Um, did I miss any other way, Valora? I think that was mm -hmm. all the ways we promoted. Yeah. yeah. And then of course, on our website too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Donna had a quick question. Do we have a tabletop or curtain shade style promotional sign? Um, we do not have anything of that ourselves that we offer from the churchwide organization. Um, you are more than welcome to create one. Um, you know, work with Elizabeth McBride, who can help you with the logo, and you can create something that works for you um in your setting i know she was just doing that with um i think it might have been darla this uh, well it was a darla i don't know if it's the same darla who's on our meeting here um, from south dakota but um yeah um and she was creating a tablecloth with the logo and was going to use that in a promotional setting so yeah yeah and i would like to encourage you all uh i, I see some saying that they're returning to um to an in-person convention and all of those. As many of those events, um, I know a lot of uh, synodical organizations were very excited about the change and the number of women who were able to participate because of the pandemic by Zoom or by Facebook Live or any of those other uh, uh, platforms. And I would encourage you to use a, a hybrid as often as you can. Because for those women who are faithful in, in giving their offerings, but they just cannot physically be in, in, um, in a space, um, but they were able to do it by, by uh, one of these uh, media platforms, uh, it means more than you could ever, ever know. So we are, um, we are not just called to be together physically, but also spiritually and to support each other uh, in, in any way that we can. And so that is one gift that we were given through the pandemic and we should not lose that gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And also if you're doing things, um, you know, online, um, feel free to promote them across the whole organization. Yes. Um, Southwest California has been doing a nice job of that when they were doing the monthly Bible study um, from Gather Magazine. Um, Southwest Texas did that with their um, book discussions that happened. Yeah, and um, New England did that too with your Bible study earlier this year. Uh, there's no reason why we can't all share together. Um, it is time for us to end our session. I'm, I'm just going to post something in um, the chat. We have the Synodical Leaders Guide. I've referred to that a couple of times. And our last update was 2019. It's a different world today. And um, we'll be working on an update. If you have any um, comments or feedback on that, I'd love to hear that as we start doing that work. Um, maybe you found that there's something missing from it um, or, you know, something you felt was 
really not necessary, let me know and I'd appreciate that. So um, thank you for taking an hour of your time today. We appreciate it. We, we thank our translator, Christina Diaz. Um, many thanks to Valora Starr for her work on all of these sessions. It's been um, a really great time. We have one more. You're welcome to join next week. You do need to register in advance. Uh, you can go to welka.org slash events, and that's where you would find it. And it is designed for conference cluster leaders. Um, so please feel free to promote that amongst your, especially if you're somebody who coordinates those or works with them, the liaison from your board. Um, and we're, we're looking forward to that. So thank you all. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care.